The government of Fukushima Prefecture in northeastern Japan has announced the first ever appearance of tropical fire ants in the region. These ants, scientifically known as Solnopsis geminata, are a venomous invasive species and are considered a threat requiring emergency measures. Although it has been reported that these ants were found in a commercial warehouse and exterminated without causing injuries, their presence raises biosecurity concerns. They are believed to have arrived through shipments from Sri Lanka, highlighting the importance of surveillance and control of invasive species worldwide. The Japanese government, in collaboration with the United States and South Korea, has announced sanctions against three groups and four individuals supporting North Korea's nuclear and missile development program. These measures come in response to recent North Korean actions, including an attempt to launch a spy satellite and missile launches in violation of United Nations resolutions. Sanctions include the freezing of assets of North Korean hacker groups and individuals linked to China. Japan urges North Korea to address concerns, including the abductions of Japanese citizens in the 1970s and 1980s, and seeks dialogue with Kim Jong-un. North Korea plans a third attempt to launch a spy satellite in October. The increase in unmanned railway stations in Japan is generating growing concern. As railway companies seek to reduce costs due to declining passengers and a declining population, nearly 60% of major stations operate without personnel, raising concerns about traveler safety and convenience. Emergencies and essential services face challenges, and legal disputes have arisen regarding accessibility and safety. To address these challenges, some companies are implementing camera and intercom systems, as well as seeking agreements with other organizations. Experts urge finding solutions that balance profitability with functionality and convenience in public railway transportation. The center of Tokyo has experienced a record-breaking August with temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius or higher for all 31 days, according to the Japan Meteorological Agency. This phenomenon marks the first full month of hot summer days since records began in 1875. Furthermore, since the beginning of the year, the city has endured 22 days of extreme heat with temperatures exceeding 35 degrees Celsius, also setting a record. These high temperatures have persisted for 57 consecutive days, and they are expected to continue into September nationwide, raising concerns about extreme weather and climate change. The police in Japan will conduct a trial with body cameras in fiscal year 2024, with plans for large-scale implementation in the future, as announced by the National Police Agency NPA. These cameras will be used to properly monitor interrogations and other situations. The larger prefectures will be the first to implement this system, and the NPA will evaluate its effectiveness before full expansion. The fiscal year 2024 budget request includes approximately 15 million yen for related expenses. Additionally, funds will be allocated for advanced technology, such as fingerprint identification through artificial intelligence and enhanced security measures for important personalities. There are also plans to upgrade the National Cyber Unit to strengthen cooperation with foreign investigative agencies. The Filipino government has taken a humanitarian step by waiving fines imposed on descendants of displaced Japanese migrants during World War II. These descendants, known as Nikogen, were stateless and considered illegal residents in the Philippines due to the loss of their birth records. They were often required to pay these fines before traveling to Japan, even after obtaining Japanese citizenship. This decision will benefit around 100 Nikijin, mostly elderly individuals, allowing them to finally travel to Japan and reunite with their families. A humanitarian victory that ends decades of struggle.
the flagship store of the Seppu department store chain in Tokyo closed due to a labor strike sparked by labor safety concerns related to the planned sale of the chain to a U.S. fund. The strike, the first by a major department store union in 61 years, involved around 900 workers at the Seppu Ekibukuro store. Seven and I Holdings Go, the parent company, decided to sell the chain to Fortress Investment Group LLC, raising concerns about job losses and current tenants reduction. The strike reflects the growing pressure on Japanese companies to restructure amid economic challenges. The Nagoya Municipal Subway has taken an innovative step by replacing traditional schedules on the Suridori Line platforms with QR codes. This measure, aimed at reducing costs, reflects the current trend where most passengers check schedules online via their smartphones. While this initiative may be convenient for many, it has also raised concerns about accessibility, especially for the elderly or those without mobile devices. The decision to implement this measure on other subway lines will depend on passenger feedback and opinions. A telecommunications survey reveals that elderly people in Japan are using the free messaging app line more than email to stay in touch. According to the Mobile Society Research Institute of NTT Docomo Inc., 74% of people aged 60 to 79 prefer line, while 58% use email. This shift marks an increase in smartphone adoption among the elderly, with 79% owning smartphones among those aged 70 and above. This phenomenon reflects Line's versatility and its growing relevance across various demographic groups in Japan. Polo Incorporated and Anna Holdings Incorporated have introduced special skin care products designed for use on the International Space Station ISS, around 2024. These are the first Japanese facial cosmetics intended for space. The cosmology line includes a facial wash and lotion designed to work in low gravity conditions and with limited resources in space. These products were created in response to a call from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. In addition to their use on the ISS, these cosmetics are expected to be useful in resource-limited situations, such as evacuation centers during natural disasters. The products will be available to consumers on Earth starting from October 1st. The researcher has worked hard to get the data, please like, subscribe and share.